So you should be getting ready to go in for your first investigating week in lab. And in fact, we have a pretty fun lab exercise for your work on. If you've opened your lab manual to scientific investigation, you'll see the lab objectives have to do with understanding the process of science, understanding what science can be used for and what it can't be used for. And as you continue your way through, there are some thought experiments, but then there's an experiment that's gonna be kind of an icebreaker that you work on with your classmates. But sometimes the material is best organized graphically, and especially if you're a person who thinks in pictures, then go Going back to the textbook when you don't find a suitable diagram in your lab manual is going to be great for you. And so for lab one, scientific investigation, if you open your 10th edition Campbell biology book to page 18 in chapter one, you're going to see a great diagram that summarizes the scientific process. So what is science? So science has been defined as both a body of knowledge about the natural world, but it's also defined as a process of learning or knowing about that same natural world. And you've probably learned quite a bit about the process of science, the steps to scientific investigation throughout your high school career or in other science classes that you've taken. But just as a refresher, let me remind you that science always starts with some kind of interesting observation. You see something and you wonder about it. When you're wondering, you're doing the second step of the scientific process, which is to ask a question. Once you've asked a question, you might leave it there, you might do some internet research, you might even pull a book out of the library to try to learn more, or get your old Campbell biology textbook off the shelf and see if the answer is right in there in the fine print. But if you're a scientist and no one has answered the question previously, then your next step is to develop a hypothesis that is a statement that explains how you think the world works. From there, you would make predictions. If your hypothesis is true, what kinds of things would you expect to happen? And then design an experiment to test those predictions. Finally, and I should point out that doing your experiment includes collecting data. It's not much of an experiment if you set it up and run away. So you have to collect your data and analyze those data in order to have your experiment complete and then to draw conclusions with respect to your hypotheses based on whether your predictions came out as expected or whether your data actually showed the opposite. So hypotheses, remember, can be supported or rejected, but they can never be proven because it's possible we'll learn more and have an alternate explanation in the future. But if the same hypothesis is supported over and over and over from multiple lines of evidence, then we might call that a scientific theory. So you'll be learning about that in lab this week. Be sure to pay attention to the steps of the scientific process and have fun getting to know your classmates.